Hi everyone, welcome to this new session of Level 2 FRA. Today we'll be going over the reading of financial reporting quality. Now, financial reporting quality as a reading in terms of a concept, it was introduced at Level 1 FRA itself and it was fairly basic in terms of its focus. At Level 2 also, it is still a very minor reading in the sense that they are just trying to give you an idea of what could be the issues related to financial reporting quality. The topic, however, has been expanded a little bit, maybe around 10-20% in comparison to what you had at level 1. The good thing is that this reading as well as the last reading of FRA are kind of working in tandem along with everything that we have covered in FRA both across level 1 and level 2. So where all could the management make some estimates, where they can have some policies that could affect the accounting results that we have in our financial statements. All of those possibilities right across level 1, level 2, all of those are mentioned again in these topics. One more thing to note about this reading is that when you look at curriculum or any other study material, you see lengthy examples given for a lot of things. Keep in mind, this reading does not have any calculations of itself. Rather, the sole purpose of this reading is to just give you idea about what could be the issues or red flags which will help us judge the quality of the financial reports from which we are picking the financial statements. So all of those examples that you see, those are more for your understanding purposes and not for calculations. So as such calculations wise, there is absolutely no new concept introduced at these readings for level two. With that out of the way, let's start with our discussion for financial reporting quality. Now from level one, you probably have a reference that Financial reporting quality can be divided into two parts. One is the reporting quality. And the other is earnings quality. The reporting quality is concerned with making sure that the financial statements that the company is making, that the management is preparing, they are following all applicable rules. So all accounting standards of that particular country or any sort of accounting rules that are applicable, all of those are being followed. That is reporting quality. And earnings quality is more related to whether the information that is being reported. So this is saying, how should information be reported? And earnings quality is saying that the information that is reported, is that giving a good outlook for the company or not? So earnings quality is more related to whether the profits, whether the operations of the company are sustainable and they are good or not. Reporting quality is concerned with whether the information that is being reported, is it following all rules or not. So we have two aspects that together make up the financial reporting quality. And as such, both of them are very highly interrelated in the sense that if a company has good earnings, I can only take that values in my financial modeling and do some valuation or do some analysis on the basis of that only if the company also has good reporting quality because if the company doesn't have good reporting quality then i will never have surety that the profits or earnings they are reporting these are actually accurate or not so as such both of these have to work in tandem to make sure that the company's information is not just reliable but it is also good for the company's analysis that anyone could be able to perform now, if you remember from level one, the reporting quality that we had, this could be divided on a sort of a spectrum. So at the top, you had gap compliant. And in this chapter, when I just write gap instead of US gap, it means all accounting standards in general. So when I just use the word gap, it is the generic word which includes IFRS, US gap, any other sort of accounting standard that any country can have. So the top of the spectrum was gap is being complied and no biases which means company is not only following the rules but also wherever the rules are giving some sort of freedom the management is also taking a very neutral position on most of their reporting uh, strategies in the sense that they are not trying to exploit the freedom being given by accounting standards to try to manipulate the earnings Rather, they are still trying to represent the true and fair position of the business. So this is the top of the spectrum. Then we had gap compliant. 
but some biases which means for some transactions or some particular items in the financial statements the management has tried to take some accounting estimates or some accounting policies which might not be naturally logically correct when you look at it first time and it is also possible that a lot of competitive firms and a lot of peer group companies are also not following these accounting estimates so they have taken a few estimates which are different from what normally they should have taken then you have further once again following all the rules but you have earnings management earnings management means the company is following all the rules but wherever in the accounting standards they have potential for any sort of accounting estimates or accounting policies they are fully using that freedom to try to manipulate earnings to as much potential as they can so over here also if you remember uh, level 1 depreciation depreciation is allowed and there are various methods allowed selection of method to be decided by the management if they select slm useful life salary value to be decided and estimated by the management so the accounting standards they say how depreciation is to be dealt with but how it is to be calculated is based on a lot of estimates all of those estimates are from the management's perspective so if i follow a depreciation rule along with some estimates i am complying with the accounting standards but if i take unrealistic assumptions for useful life salvage value that is what earnings management would be so i am following the rules i am charging depreciation i am showing correct treatment of depreciation i am following all the rules but i am trying to exploit the freedom given to me by way of accounting estimates to its fullest potential that is earnings management then we had gap non compliant which means now the company is not following the rules itself and they are very highly managing the earnings they are pretty much presenting manipulated financials which are not even following all the rules and lastly you had gap non compliant and fraudulent or fake transactions so this was the spectrum as covered in level 1 itself for us the last two is something that mostly something like audit report would tell us that the auditor itself will tell that the company is not presenting information as per the required financial standards so as such these are the two which often would be apparent to us on the basis of just the audit report of the company first three is something that we'll have to analyze because in first three the auditor will say that yes company is following all the rules that they have to follow so you and i will then have to look at notes and further disclosures in the financials to see if the company is trying to manage and manipulate their earnings or are they presenting the actual true and fair picture of the business just like a lot of their other competitors are also probably doing in the industry so within these three it would be our job to understand how much sort of manipulation the management is trying to incorporate into the financials now when we talk about these manipulations there are several ways or several sort of focus points by which management has some sort of scope to manipulate or try to manage how much earnings and expenses they are showing we can have issues related to measurement and timing so when transactions are to be recorded that is something that the management might be able to influence also they might be able to influence the measurement of a lot of things the value at which a lot of things are recorded for example when a machine is to be bought normally installation expense would also be capitalized along with the machine but sometimes companies might do other expenses and also try to replicate it as an installation expense which might not ideally be suitable for the business of course accounting standards allow for that they say that if there is more or less in a general accounting standards are of the view that if there is any expense done to make the asset usable in the first place aside from just purchasing the asset then all of those expenses should be capitalized but if management is trying to add on more things and trying to exploit this freedom given by the accounting standards that is probably not correct we also have classification issues which is if you remember at level 1 relating to fixed assets there can be additional expenses a company can treat them as capital expenses or 
as revenue items. So they can capitalize it or expense it in the income statement. Both of those are nothing but classification issues that where we classify any particular item that could also create some sort of manipulation for the company. Aside from this, you can have outright biased choices where maybe the company is accelerating the recognition of revenue and they are delaying or deferring the recognition of expense to increase the profits in any particular year or they are trying to use inventory methods in such a way that the profits of the company could be reported higher. So if the company operates in a highly inflationary environment, they are using FIFO so that each year the inventory would be high. That means the assets would look high and at the same time cost would come out as lower and the profits of the company would also be high. So as such, you can have all the bias choices. Everywhere where you had accounting choices for the management throughout level one and level two, wherever the company takes a choice which is not reflecting true and fair view of the picture, but sort of in on the side of trying to influence the earnings of the company, all of those are part of bias choices. Nothing but if you go through the curriculum, this has nothing but details of all the points that you've covered throughout level one and level two. Aside from these, you can also have treatment of specific transactions like mergers and acquisitions. Mostly mergers and acquisitions, the assets are to be merged, liabilities are to be merged using fair value. But that fair value is once again based on an estimate. So as such, a lot of elements mostly revolve around wherever a value has to be estimated. So sort of fair value is always an estimated value. Anywhere will we have that element introduced in the finances. There is a scope for management to try to manipulate it till some extent. So these are some of the ways in which management can try to manipulate. And whenever any of these are used, it presents us with the financials which are complying with the rules because it's the accounting standards that give the company and the management the freedom to make some estimates. But they are not representing the proper economic situation of the business. So they are following rules, but they are not actually conveying the true and fair picture of what the business is actually doing. So this was our discussion regarding reporting quality. Let's move on to how exactly, what are the steps that we do to often analyze both of these together.